this relay does work. Got my leads securely fastened there. Uh, looking for potato chip clips and alligator clamps and I got these, but um, got all these wires going, voltage was bugging out. So I uh, just got easy peasy because I need these alligator clips. Uh, any bitty wires there, just wrapping them around is not good enough. They need to be soldered. I borrowed a soldering iron from my neighbor. Got a little bit of JB Weld on that plastic housing. It had a crack on one side. Strengthened it up. So now it absolutely works. Got it all dialed in. This little plunger in there, it only moves a little bit. See, there it went. That little bit presses down on the contacts. It's always trying to reach the center. If I push this out a little bit, it is going to retract. Hey, okay. <laughs> I thought I might shoot across the room or this reel right here would shoot across the room and get damaged from the force. I actually had this laying flat when I was testing it. I'm like, oh, this little plunger has nowhere to go. Is it going to fly out? Okay. It wants to be centered. Oop. Okay. So we know it works. Great. We got it working. I'm getting it back together. This is the plunger. The little push rod goes in there. And it goes inside of here. Due to the magnetic field, when you energize that coil, it moves that little plunger. That is beyond brilliant. Okay. Uh, you know, what's really baking my brain this is a spool of wire that doesn't short. If it was insulated wire, I'd be like, okay, it starts out at the middle here and it winds its way out to the outside. And then here, it's like, well, why wouldn't it just go straight from here to here underneath where the coil is? I don't know. This is just, just beyond, beyond imagination and phantom force wow this is how motors work and you know it's just it's it's brilliant it's really freaking brilliant i went ahead and i super glued the spring to that you can't just put it on there and then put it all back together because then that could come apart. The spring does sit down in there. You press it in and it goes click or it can easily come out again. I ain't taking any chances. I put just a little bit of super, super glue in there. And our happy little coil is soldered up. Got a wrap of tape around there. That's the only color I have that's decent tape matters. Cheap tape sucks. I got some black cheap tape, but I ain't putting it on there. Good. 3M. Okay. So that is ready to go back on. Before it goes down into the steel chamber, it's a rough very rough getting it in there. We're going to um, just put a little bit of petroleum jelly around the edge. All the ears, especially the one that was broken, was JB welded last night and then filed all down nice and smooth and retapped. Also cut these screws so that they're not extra long and pointy. 
heads are a little large. Might do something with that. We're gonna start getting this together. Okay, so there is our contactor and spring. Goes right in there. And now, we lower into position the base plate. There we are. Push that all the way down as far as it will go. And then all we have is a nice little contactor that's waiting for a barrel. You can actually see a little bit of markings on there. Where that was pressing against there. It has a divot, there's the point where that goes. Just like so. A little wobbly on there. The um, coil cage is going to hold that steady. It doesn't have to move much. There we are. Got the plastic piece in there. Post wire coming up and soldered on. Very nice. I'm just going to fold them in out of the way and hopefully, don't break anything. Ground lead made up nice and soldered and tucked. And gasket is on, cork is on, top plate is on. Essentially, it's surrounded by a steel cage, and I've read that that strengthens the magnetic field. When the contactors on the bottom become energized, that steel cage, all the bracketry underneath and around and on top, it also becomes energized. But it doesn't affect any of the magnetism. How? And nothing is, of that is touching the ground, so that's okay. You know, the coil makes the magnetism, but then the metal shell around it doesn't. Wow. It's like, yeah, you need to pass 40 amps through the contactors in the bottom. And then the bracketry and everything inside, all the steel parts, become energized at 12 volts, but they don't carry any current. Just goes through the contactor. Wow. And there it is. Mm -hmm. Moment of truth. Let's see if this works. Yes, it does. Works like a champion. Mm -hmm. Hey, that's what we want to see. And now let's see how our amps are doing again. We got the ground lead still connected to the ground. The hot goes to one lead of the meter and goes through it. The meter is in series. And yeah, 0.8 amps. 0 0.80. And as it heats up, it is going to decrease in amperage a little bit. That's great. Problem solved. Proper repair. Took the other part back to the store and the guy was very friendly. He said, no problem. He returned my money. So I still have zero dollars into this whole project. This is ready to go back out on the truck. Done and done.
went ahead and put a note on there for the next guy. Hey, the next guy could be you. I also grounded down those bolt heads that I had on there. So it's nice and flush. I don't have to use any spacers. This will be ready to bolt right on to that fender very nicely and easily. If I ever have to get these off and get the screws out, then um, I'll just have to cut a little slit in there and use a flathead. No problem. And these have been torqued to a couple of foot pounds, not much because then the plastic could crack. And once this is bolted on there to the fender, real sturdy, this is gonna be against that flush and there's no way that these screws will be able to come undone so this will all be nice and snug as a bug once again i have to reiterate the difference between these two where the original which has been repaired and works now is 15 ohms The resistance of the wrong relay is 3 ohms. And as soon as you apply current to it, it is going to heat up and it might go up by an ohm or so, but um, it's a way, way different animal. This is only designed to operate for a short period of time and transport a whole ton of current, just for a starter. This is meant to be on all the time, and the maximum amount of current that it could transport here, um, there are a lot more going to say somewhere around 70 amps. My circuit. The charging circuit for the aux battery is a 50 amp fuse. So <clears throat> looking at the internals and everything, it all makes sense. Rebuild one if you got to, and if you can. But if you gotta buy one, don't buy the wrong one. And don't believe what the guy at the parts counter tells you. And don't believe your eyes. And you say, oh, that's the same thing. It's not. Very nice. Got a battery cable. And yellow and red on one. And then on the other, we got the violet. That provides charging battery side is mated with that fuse for the running lights so this is going to connect a 50 amp fused main battery circuit from the fuse box to this lug here which is not fused this is a battery cable and then this other cable that goes to the fuse box is not fused it uses uh well, from the fuse box it is, then a 40 amp for some kind of trailer circuit, and then 20 amp for the running lights. The trigger, it's hard to see, it's the bottom post, the trigger is on there. I'm get this mounted on the fender. Very hard to do. Get the bolts in there through the fender. 8 millimeter took the liberty of putting that on there so it doesn't fall off if you drop these bolts or even the special nuts that go on that solenoid and they fall down in the fender they're very hard to get i had to fish one out it took a half an hour that sucked i got very lucky because the spot where it fell was visible Okay, we'll get this bolted up and then we'll get the tray on. We'll add a little bit of grease to the bolts so they don't ever get stuck. And there it is, 
all nice and snug. Tables, some of them are a little kind of like curved and under stress a little much. Where like if it could have come from a different angle with them and attached them on there a different way or rotated it 90 degrees and then put them on switch lugs it'd be more conducive but god that's a tight spot the fact that they're on there at all and they're on the right way that's okay that's so realistically in order to get in there you have to take the radiator out stand over there Oh, that was hard. That was a hard one. 